that our nervous system is having a very normal reaction to a very abnormal environment. It's a lot easier to sit on our couch and doom scroll and we get stuck in this sympathetic activation. By far the most important macronutrient for the stress response specifically. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video. As always, I am so, so excited to have you guys here. And if you're new here, hello, welcome. My name's Claire, I'm a naturopathic doctor and I'm super passionate about helping you feel more educated and empowered when it comes to your health. I also know that the internet can be a overwhelming place when it comes to health information. And while I do want to help educate and inform you, my goal is also to open up your awareness to your own body and health so that you can make the best choices for you on a day-to-day -day basis. With that being said, let's just jump right into the video. I'm very excited because today we are talking all about the stress response and nervous system health. I have been getting so many comments asking for a video about stress nervous system health, resiliency, all of those things. And to be honest, it's taken me so long to sit down and actually film this because this is just such a large topic and there's so many things to talk about. So just for the sake of this video not being an hour, today we are really going to be focusing on what the nervous system is, what is happening when your stress response is activated, how you can create a more flexible nervous system, and then tangible day-to-day -day changes that you can make to help improve your resiliency, improve your stress response and lower stress in your body. Let's just start by talking about why we are so chronically stressed. And I don't think that this is a surprise to anyone. And you guys know I talk about this all the time, but we are truly living at a mismatch with our environment. The human body and the human nervous system was really made and designed for short-term stress. What we are living in now is a world where we are chronically exposed to stressors. Our nervous system was not built to have access to the amount of information and stimulus that we do on a day-to-day -day basis and the chronic stressors. And the most common stressors that we experience are work-related stressors, financial, interpersonal, relationship. I also acknowledge that health, whether that be your health or health of a loved one, can be a stressor. So in general, we are just exposed to so much chronic stress and stress that doesn't go away. On top of that, we have decreased coping mechanisms. And again, there's a number of reasons why we have less coping mechanisms. We've moved away from that communal living, communal wisdom, and we also know that community is incredibly important for nervous system regulation. We've also moved away from intergenerational knowledge. And then on top of that, we have a lot more unhealthy coping mechanisms that make it a lot less enticing to do the healthy coping mechanisms. It's a lot easier to sit on our couch and doom scroll than it is to meditate or do some breath work. And I just want to stress the fact that our nervous system is having a very normal reaction to a very abnormal environment. The other thing that I did want to mention is the impact that physical health has on our stress response. So we know that physical health matters for our nervous system health, and we know that nervous system dysregulation is going to be amplified if we have other physical conditions. So things like diabetes, prediabetes, any blood sugar dysregulation, thyroid conditions, any chronic condition or inflammatory condition, those are all going to impact the stress response. And then we know that the stress response will also play a role in the progression of those conditions. Now I can make a totally separate video on the mind body connection. But for the sake of time, let's move on and talk about the nervous system. So today we're going to be talking about the autonomic nervous system. And this is just what it sounds like. It is in charge of all the automatic functions in our body. So our heart rate, blood pressure, respiratory rate, salivary secretion, all of those things are controlled by the autonomic nervous system. And there are two main divisions of this nervous system. We have the sympathetic, and this one is commonly known as the fight or flight response. And then we have the parasympathetic and this is commonly known as the rest and digest and it's really important to remember the goal is not to always be in the parasympathetic and never be in the sympathetic our goal is to have nervous system flexibility where we can move ourselves out of the sympathetic and back into the parasympathetic as easily and as quickly as possible. Okay, so let's start by talking about the sympathetic nervous system. And this one is commonly referred to as our fight or flight, although we are seeing it more and more commonly referred to as the fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. And this is because the fight or flight response is not as commonly seen. When you think about our modern stressors, the fight or flight response just doesn't seem to really make sense. You can't really fight or run away from the chronic stress of your job or financial issues. So what we tend to see is people slipping into that freeze or fawn response. The freeze response is especially common in women. That can look like waking up feeling totally overwhelmed, it being very difficult to get out 
of bed. It may look like procrastinating or that it's very hard to take action on different things. And that is because really your body is just in this paralysis mode. It's very hard to take action. Now, the other reaction is the fawn response. And this is when you try and over control the situation. Maybe you fawn over everyone else. You use up all of your resources to try and control the external in hopes that it brings you stability. So let's talk about what is actually happening when our sympathetic nervous system is activated. And it's really, really important to remember that our brain doesn't know the difference between a real stress, perceived stress, physical stress, emotional stress. Our body and our nervous system is going to react in the same way to all of those. So when the sympathetic nervous system is activated, we are releasing neurotransmitters. These are going to act on the body to increase heart rate, to shunt blood flow away from our digestive organs and to shunt it towards our skeletal muscles. Our pupils will dilate, our blood pressure will increase. All of this is getting us ready to fight or run away from our stressor. Unfortunately, like we've said before, this just is not possible in the modern world and we get stuck in this sympathetic activation. But that is the sympathetic nervous system. Now, I do always get asked questions about cortisol. So cortisol really is designed to be a short term hormone because humans are designed for short term stress. What we see with this environment where our nervous system is chronically being activated is that more and more people have this chronic release of cortisol. So now that we've talked about the sympathetic nervous system, let's talk about the parasympathetic nervous system. So this is our rest and digest. And in this nervous system, blood flow is being shunted back towards our digestive organs, our heart rate slows down, our blood pressure decreases, and our body is able to have that space and the resources to repair. Now, like I said, the goal is not to always be in the parasympathetic nervous system. The goal is to be able to shift back and forth. And one of the ways that we actually track if people have a flexible nervous system is something called heart rate variability and with higher heart rate variability being associated with a more flexible nervous system basically it shows that people are able to transition from the sympathetic back into the parasympathetic so now that we've talked about the two nervous systems, let's talk a bit about diet and lifestyle approaches. Diet is actually really important for nervous system regulation, separate from the fact that blood sugar control is so important for nervous system regulation. And you guys know, I love me some blood sugar control. It's very important to remember that with anything important in your body, your body has multiple mechanisms to keep that in control. So whether it be your heart rate, blood pressure, blood sugar, all of those are tightly regulated by multiple mechanisms of action. And what we tend to see is if people have poor blood sugar control, they can have episodes of hypoglycemia where their blood sugar will go too low. And one of the mechanisms that our body has is to release cortisol, to activate the liver, to release glycogen stores, to bring that blood sugar back up. So if you are having blood sugar dips throughout the day, your nervous system is going to be activated. And especially if you are struggling with that 2, 3 a.m. wake up, a lot of the times that is also related to blood sugar control. Basically your blood sugar is dipping throughout the night and then your stress response is being activated and it's waking you up trying to increase the blood sugar. Diet and blood sugar control is important for that reason but there's a lot of other reasons why diet is incredibly important both from the macro and micronutrient components. By far the most important macronutrient for the stress response specifically is protein. Protein and amino acids are very important for the nervous system. Many of our neurotransmitters are made up of amino acids acids. So for example, tyrosine is converted into dopamine and then noradrenaline. Tryptophan is converted into 5-HTP and subsequently serotonin. It's also important to note that over 90% of serotonin is made in the gut. So gut health matters as well. And then finally, glutamate is converted into GABA. So that is just a few examples of how amino acids are really, really important for the stress response. And then we also know that protein plays a large role in blood sugar control as well. Moving on to the micronutrients. Whenever we are looking at the nervous system, it's important to remember that neurotransmitters are synthesized using enzymes and those enzymes need cofactors. And cofactors are basically micronutrients that allow for the enzymes to work and to create the neurotransmitters. Let's talk about a few of the vitamins and minerals that are especially important for the nervous system and the stress response. So the main ones that I talk about with patients are things like the B vitamins, vitamin C, vitamin D, calcium, magnesium, and zinc. Starting off with the B vitamins, specifically B5, 
B6, and B9. B vitamins are found in things like leafy greens, nuts, seeds, beans, legumes, poultry, fish, bee pollen, and nutritional yeast. Another very, very important one is vitamin C. So vitamin C is a very potent antioxidant and stress can cause a lot of oxidative stress on the body. So vitamin C is incredibly important and you guys know that is your fruits and vegetables. So the next one is vitamin D and we can get vitamin D from some animal products. We can also synthesize it from the sun and cholesterol. So sunlight and then the cholesterol in your body and then your body can make vitamin D. And then the main minerals that I talk about are zinc, calcium, and magnesium. So magnesium starting off is again, very important. It's used for a lot of enzymatic reactions within the body for neurotransmitter synthesis, for the synthesis of melatonin. All of those need magnesium. And magnesium can be found in leafy greens, nuts, seeds, beans, legumes, some of your fruits and vegetables. The next one is zinc. Again, zinc is incredibly important. That can be found in a lot of oysters, seafood, nuts, seeds, beans, legumes, grains. And then lastly, calcium is also very important. And of course, calcium can be found in dairy, but it can also be found in soy products, sardines. Those can be great sources of calcium as well. And I know that you guys really like when I talk about the micronutrients in food. And I think that sometimes I take for granted that I just know off the top of my head, micro and macronutrient content of different foods. So if you guys are looking for a really great resource, I really like the National Institute of Health information page on each micronutrient. So you can look at every micronutrient and it gives you the recommended daily allowance for males and females of different age groups. And then it also gives you a list of foods that are high in that micronutrient. So I will link that resource for you guys. Again, I don't think that we should be over analyzing the micronutrient content of our food, but it does give you an idea of what foods are more micronutrient dense. And I always talk about the importance of building a diet that is whole food focused and micronutrient dense, regardless of your health concern. And one other micronutrient that I wanted to mention was choline. You guys know I love choline. I think it's one of the most underrated micronutrients, but it is very, very important for liver health, cognitive function, cardiovascular health, and just overall health in general. And most people do not get enough choline. Specifically, it's important for your nervous system health because choline is a precursor to acetylcholine, which is the main neurotransmitter in the parasympathetic nervous system. So again, micronutrients matter when it comes to your diet. All right, so now that we've talked a little bit about diet, let's talk about how we can move ourselves out of the sympathetic into the parasympathetic on a day-to-day -day basis after either acute stressors or whilst we are dealing with more chronic stressors. So the main way that we do this is by activating the vagal nerve, which is the 10th cranial nerve. And this is the main nerve in the parasympathetic nervous system and it runs from our brain to our digestive organs to our heart and other places in the body. The vagal nerve can be activated through a number of different mechanisms. The main one being breathing. Deep breaths do a very good job at activating the vagal nerve. Other ways that we can activate it are things like chanting, humming, singing, laughter, social connection, cold water exposure. Those are all ways that we can activate the vagal nerve and I really like breath work because our breath is something that is always accessible to us and it's something that we can do anywhere and it really just takes a few minutes to totally transform your nervous system. So a technique that I really like to use with patients is something called Brock's breathing. So this is where you breathe in through your nose for four seconds, hold for four seconds, you exhale for four seconds, and then you hold for four seconds. And we will usually do anywhere from five to ten rounds of this with the goal to really be activating that parasympathetic nervous system to slow our breathing breathing rate down and subsequently slow our heart rate down, decrease our blood pressure and really bring our body into that calm state. So if you want, we can do a few rounds of that right now. So sit up nice and tall, open your chest and take a deep breath in, hold out and then hold. All right, here we go.
All right, hopefully you are feeling more relaxed after that. I just love box breathing. It is such an amazing tool. But of course, if you don't wanna use that, you can always do something like humming, chanting, singing, those are all great ways to activate the vagal nerve. Things like cold exposure can be helpful as well. Sometimes I'll do a cold face plunge first thing in the morning just to help wake myself up, but also activate that parasympathetic nervous system. If you have access to it, things like cold plunges can be helpful, but all of those are incredible tools. Let's talk about how we can actually implement these on a day-to-day -day basis. And there's a few things that I wanna to touch on. So the first thing that we have to do is open up our awareness to our nervous system and our stress response. So many of us are chronically living in a state of stress to the point where we don't even realize that we're stressed. I ask patients so often if they have stress in their life and they say, no, there's not a lot of stress. And then we start to unpack things and there's stress. So the first thing is awareness. And this can be awareness of your body, noticing if you're having shallow of breath, noticing if you're on edge, especially if you're getting triggered by a lot of things, if every little inconvenience in your life is setting you off. So opening up your awareness, opening up your awareness to your triggers and your stressors and your body is going to be really important. A lot of the times our body will start sending us signals that we're stressed. The next thing is mindset work. I think that this is incredibly important for the stress response. It goes hand in hand with opening up awareness, but really coming at life from that growth centered mindset is going to be incredibly important for having a healthy stress response. I'm going to wrap up the video here. The perfectionist in me is just absolutely screaming because I know that there is so much more that I would want to add, but I really just wanted to give you guys this general overview of the nervous system so you can understand what is going on in your body when you are both acutely and chronically stressed. I wanted to give you guys those tools that you can use. The breath work is amazing. Opening up your awareness, the mindset work, all of those are very, very important. And for breath work, I really find that morning, midday, and evening are the best times to do it. Morning really primes your nervous system for the day. That midday check-in really, really allows us to reset because so many of us just get pushed into that sympathetic response early on in the day, and then we're kind of stuck there. And if we get to the evening and we've been in the sympathetic response for 12 hours, it's very hard to pull ourselves back out. So I really like that midday check-in, and a lot of my patients will just set a timer on their phone. And then lastly, I really like doing breath work or some sort of breathing or meditation in the evening. As always, I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you got some value out of it. As always, my goal is for you guys to get as much information and benefit out of the content as possible. Please let me know if you guys enjoyed the video and what you thought of the video in the comments. And if you guys have any follow-up questions, let me know in the comments down below. As always, I am here to support you on your health journey. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Now look where we are.